Andrew Mitchell, an undercover vice officer, fatally shot Donna Dalton Castleberry in 2018 during a prostitution sting. His first trial, where Mitchell testified, ended in a mistrial. Now he faces a second trial. His lawyers insist it was a justified shooting, while the state accuses him of shooting the young woman out of anger after she was no longer a threat. On August 23rd, 2018, Donald Castleberry, a 23-year-old mother of two, was on the west side of Columbus here in Franklin County when she encountered the defendant. He was working undercover. He picked her up, suspecting prostitution. After he stopped the car, he told her he was a police officer and she was under arrest. She said, where's your badge? He said, I forgot it. You're right, he did not have a badge on him that day because of a policy that existed back in August of 2018. Undercover officers did not have to carry their badge on them. The issue in the case was the interaction between Andrew Mitchell and Donald Castleberry it spiraled out of control. She didn't believe it was a police officer. She believed she was trapped in a car by somebody who was trying to rape or harm her. Donna Castleberry pulls out a knife when he is buckled into that driver's seat of the Mitsubishi. She attacks him with that knife. This cut required 34 stitches. And then she comes towards him to get into the back of the car. He thinks she's going to slash his throat. She was trying to get help. She wasn't a threat when she was trapped in the back of that car with no way out. The car was equipped with child locks, so she had no way to exit the vehicle. He fired six shots. Donna Castleberry was in the backseat of that car. She was trying to get away. Any threat was over. Our community is divided or against the police, so the stakes were incredibly high. There's no question that he's convicted of murder. I have no other option but to send him to life in prison. One of the first things investigators discovered at the crime scene was the cell phone audio recording Andrew Mitchell made. Per vice unit policy, he'd recorded his and Donna Castleberry's entire interaction up until the very end. It would prove to be a critical piece of evidence. Don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. Help! She got a knife. Help! She just cut Help! me. Help! Get off of me! Just cut me. Help! Please help me! Help! Help! Oh! Nightmare. The prosecution's case was an audio recording, and then it was synced up to a very grainy video. It was video from the apartment building. He had time to release his seatbelt, to open his door, to reach down between the seats for his gun that was in a holster, to pull the holster out, to pull the gun from the holster. He sustained a cut to his hand, no further injuries of any other sort during the entire time. She was begging, help me. She was scared of him. Please help me! Please help me! The first time we heard the audio recording was in the courtroom, and it was worse than I could have ever imagined. I didn't expect to hear her beg for her life. That audio tape is brutal. This is the first case I've ever been involved in where you hear someone losing their life. You hear them plead, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, stop. Jurors were listening to her be on the receiving end of six gunshots. Those are powerful, powerful things for a jury. Nightmare. Those were the last words of Donald Castleberry. Facing up to life in prison, Vice Detective Andrew Mitchell has taken the stand in his own defense. The 30-year police vet is accused of murder and manslaughter in the shooting death of Donna Castleberry. 
Anytime you have a confrontation with somebody in a closed space like this car, I'm going to have the person demonstrate as much as possible. If you would grab the student's hands, okay. so you're saying at this point in time you're pushing. Yes, I'm and pushing you, as far as way as I can get. This passive area is up against the dashboard. Correct. And where is her foot? Her left foot. It was mainly right there on, on my Adams app. Did you believe she still had the knife at that point? She definitely had the knife still in her hand. In my well over 150 trials, I have never seen that type of demonstration in the middle of a trial. I thought it was very effective. How do you cross-examine a, a witness uh, that just did that demonstration? The prosecutor's not going to get up and do that. So you can get a point in Andrew Mitchell's favor that can't be counterpointed. Thank you, Steve. Even though his testimony on direct examination had been very strong testimony under cross-examination, they're going to try and get you to react, to slip up, to say something that you shouldn't have said. When you were interviewed by Sergeant Pilia, do you remember telling him you didn't know which leg was pressed up against your neck? She placed her foot against my neck. And you didn't recall which leg? <sighs> no, I didn't. If that's what I said in my statement. Has that come back to you since, that information? Just going over things with my lawyers and, and remembering what happened. It, it was determined it was her left foot. Do you remember it being her left foot? I, no. At the time, I didn't remember it was my, her left foot or her right foot. So the demonstration Miss Caitlin did with her left foot, maybe it wasn't her left foot after all, was it? It was her left foot because that's the DNA was found on her left foot. So that's why you say it's the left foot, to match the evidence? Doesn't matter what foot she had on my neck, she had one of her feet on my neck. It looks bad. It looks as though he's making it up, or it looks as though he's lying, or it looks as though he's saying a physical ev evidentiary thing to corroborate his testimony just now. There were no pictures taken. You suffered no neck injury, right? It still hurt when I was in the hospital. You never had anything documented, right? I doubt you could see him, I think. I have brown skin. It's hard to see any kind of mark. The jury deliberated in this case for approximately five hours. Everyone can have a seat. When the verdict came back so quickly, I was sure that it had to be a good sign. Uh, the first verdict, uh, State of Ohio versus Andrew Kirk Mitchell. We, the jury, upon our oaths and law and evidence in this case, find the defendant not guilty of murder as charged in count one of the indictment. Not guilty of voluntary manslaughter as charged in count two of the indictment. That is when my world came crashing down around me because he is the man that killed my sister. Thank you. On behalf of the uh, community. Up until counsel. that moment, I fully believed we would have a guilty verdict. I never even fathomed that he would be acquitted of these charges. Thank you. When they came back not guilty of everything, it's just a huge sign of relief for Andrew and his family. I believe Andrew Mitchell taking the stand was uh, essential in his defense. I do not believe there is anything else in the trial that had as much impact on the jury to have a uh, different verdict. She didn't get to see her daughters go to their first day of school. She's not there for Christmases. She's not there for birthdays. And every holiday that passes, she is missed. He felt like he was justified in what he did, and I never will. Andrew Mitchell was found not guilty of Donna Castleberry's death, but he remains in jail, awaiting trial on federal charges of violating civil rights, withholding evidence, and tampering with witnesses which were the result of a separate investigation. He pleaded not guilty to all charges and will likely be tried sometime in 2024. If convicted on all those counts, he'll spend the rest of his life in prison.